people crying and buildings burning and a fire everywhere and tornadoes. It's kind of how it feels when you're playing this course. What's up, Disgenerates? It's the Disc Golf World. I'm Jefferson, the one who spends all day in the minivan watching Disc Golf to recap it all for you in a fraction of the time. Thanks to everyone supporting on Patreon for allowing me to bring you all the conversation from the Tour Championship, the last event of the season, and if you ask some people, the worst one all year. Not because of the course itself, changes, or anything really besides the format, but we'll get into that later. First, let's see how the players themselves think about Nevin. It's just uh, chaos at all times, you know, one slip up and you get a kick so far into the woods, instant bogey. A lot of the holes, it's either you throw a good shot or you throw a bad shot. There's no like, there's no really in between. There's almost no holes out here where it's stress-free. That's And that's the problem. You know, of course, every once in a while you might see a bad kick here or there, but for the most part, you either hit the fairway or you don't. And you know, if, if you don't, you're scrambling for par. A lot of times even bogey, you're having to work for that bogey. Have to be prepared to scramble hard on this course. Unless you're right in the middle of the fairway, it's always kind of a scramble shot a little bit. I like the natural, like, coming out of the woods, trying to see your scramble shots rather than taking a meter in from a string line. It certainly makes me want to have a simplified game plan so that I can not let my brain take over too much. <laughs> Just like one foot to the left or right can completely change the shot and or the footing. So there's gonna be some standstill shots you don't wanna throw, but you kind of get forced into. And if you don't, you bring double bogey into play or something, trying to be too aggressive. I do wanna be maybe a little bit conservative. I think bogeys will come on, on this course. So it's just reasonable to maybe accept them uh, here and there and, and take your birdies when you can. You're gonna see struggles for sure. I mean, you're gonna see a lot of low scores, but you're also, you know, four rounds out here, you're not gonna see someone breeze through and shoot four or 10 unders. That's just not gonna happen. Pretty much anything can happen. You know, you're gonna see some really big swings between rounds. You know, you can be throwing really great one round and get yourselves up there, maybe even in double digits in the next round, you could be struggling for pars. In simple terms, Nevin is sort of like waking one off with sandpaper. Without a doubt, scrambling is gonna be key to scoring as birdie opportunities may be limited, creating more importance on saving those tough pars. Even with the game plans drawn up, there isn't much you can plan for at Nevin once it's time to compete. I think that you can plan for your tee shot, but other than that, you can't really plan. And I even got scared. Why, why am I playing so good? I feel like I should be messing up a little bit more to be prepared. Of course, you can go through a practice round, breeze through and shoot it, you know, and you're not playing from the spots where you bounced off the tree and went 100 feet in the woods. Like you're just picking that up and walking to the next hole. Where in the tournament, you're playing that out. And so it's, it can be tough mentally on people, especially players that are in the field. Some of the best players in the world, you know, we're used to, getting a lot of birdie looks and you can get stuck. I don't know how people like love woods golf so much when you just lose a disc off of a shot that's like two feet off, it's just gone forever. With all that being said, players still do find the course fair. Remember, just because things are hard doesn't make it not worth it. So fellas, send that six on answer text to your crush. This time will work for sure. There's not really any, any, any middle trees. There's all, all the shots are very fair. They're right there. They're very challenging. I think this course is very fair. There's not really, uh, there's not really, really a ton of trees in the middle of fairways that, you know, you can't see and are kind of just, you know, you're hoping to miss on either side. So I, I think all the fairways are well defined. Being lucky and being unlucky is again, exciting, uh, breaks up the monotony, but uh, you know, when we're playing for $30,000, maybe you don't want that as much. Being sent on cut in the fair like, fairway like this is so nice too, because it's so much more important. Like if you're up like another 50 feet, but on one of the sides, yeah, it's a um, big difference. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of separation also with the way the design is because, you know, someone laces a shot and someone throws just an inch or a foot off and you're going to get a bogey. And that same person that threw it one foot to the right of your shot is going to get through and get a birdie. Consistent scrambling is going to be vital for scoring, but also making those crucial circle two looks will be the difference between a good and great score. This course play is super difficult, so I feel like the jump putting is probably going to be kind of key. Right. It's kind of tough to give yourself circle one looks on a lot of these holes. Definitely a putter's kind of course. You yeah. throw a lot of shots that are going to be weird. Yeah, circle two putts. Yeah. Got to make them. I think putting is going to be important this week. You're going to have a lot of like C2 looks for birdies, and uh, if you're going to hit the first gap and make your putts, you're going to be doing good this week, I feel like. Give yourself a, a chance at birdie. That's always the name of the game out here at Nevin. Beth at 69. I just told myself, you've got to will this one in there. Whatever you have, just will it in there. This man is unbelievable. This is what athletes live for. This is the moment. 
Nevin makes players actually care about landing in certain spots of fairways and forces specific shots to do well. The angles matter more so than ever, just like hitting the initial gaps off the tee. The course is extremely demanding, and if you aren't playing it the way it was designed, could find yourself in lots of trouble. This style of course really challenges you to throw the very specific shot that the course asks for. The actual fairway is between those two trees. So that little like two foot gap you can see right there. Yeah. It can be very frustrating mentally to watch someone throw just a pretty similar shot and get maybe two strokes better than you on the hole. And just, you know, you're off by an inch, you're off by, off by a mile out here. That's kind of how it plays. Looks like it would be a little better, but it's actually, actually a worse angle. So I threw this one farther, but it was more right and it kind of makes my angle a lot more awkward, whereas the other one's shorter, but it's more left, more lined up with the gap. So distance, distance doesn't always mean it's better. When your timing is a little bit off or you're not good with your angles, it could get frustrating super fast. I think a lot of these holes, it's like just hit the first gap, make mm. sure you get your par, and maybe have some opportunities for birdie, but um, they play a lot like MVP, where it's gonna play really tough. Just right. try to get off the tee a little bit. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about the angle and hitting the first gap and everything Everything after that is like a bonus for me. That has always been my mentality in the woods. Just hit the first gap and have the right angle on my disc and it's usually all you need. And Gavin was telling me, he's like, I think I know why better players get luckier uh, yesterday is because he was saying that I might miss my line, but I hit my angle most of the time. So it still has generally the same flight path. If I do miss, you know, just one tree, I can still get through. And I've never really thought about of that before, but I think I do a pretty decent job of hitting the correct angle I want, especially when I'm, my game's feeling really good. There's some times where you just know you're not going to miss the angle. Sounds like being aggressive might find people in even trickier spots. However, finding the right landing location sometimes requires more than what one wants to do. It might be worth going a little more aggressive because if you go down there somewhere, anywhere in that area, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy up and down. Right. So if you just like push your shot too straight versus mine skipped a little left, and the left is just so tough over here. Definitely not all aggression all the time. It's it's the type of thing where, you I mean, even the fairways, a lot of times you're scrambling it from the middle of the fairway. If you throw the shot perfectly, half the time you're in a spot, you have nothing. This second shot's always pretty tough because as you can see, the, the fairway is just, there's trees right in the middle of the fairway. So even if you're in the fairway, you're literally scrambling. You can throw a perfect shot and you got trees blocking your angle, blocking your, you know, shot shaping. So you got to straddle out and throw it around a, around a tree. And that's right in the middle of the fairway that can happen. So it doesn't even matter if you're off the fairway, you can, you know, what you call scrambling from the fairway is what I call it. But you don't have the luxury to just throw a wide open shot like you would on a golf course fairway. I mean, there are some holes that I definitely will play aggressive and, and go for a, like a big driver shot down the fairway. You sometimes you're scrambling from the woods, you're scrambling from the fairway. There's just, just a big old scramble fest, you know, especially when you're on these par fours that are going around corners and, and angles like that, that, that can be really tough. So the person that can shape the shot, shape the discs and give themselves those, those birdie looks, even when they're in a, a very tough spot. Because anybody can get up and down if you're a pro from a 200, 250 feet wide open shot. It's uh, when you got trees in your way and you got some tough obstacles and it's tricky up and down. You get a couple up and downs from, from that spot, that might be the difference between winning and losing. There wasn't lots of new changes, rather, as Drake would say, just a few minor ones. The biggest being in the change to hole six, reverting it back to the par four we sort of saw two years ago, although the basket isn't in the same spot. This year we got a different layout, so this is hole six. And it is a par four position this year, looks like, whereas last year it was a par five. Well, I liked last year's hole. Yeah, I did too. Um, I heard that it's because of uh, Hurricane took down oh. a lot of trees in that area. So this is the devastation from the hurricane. And you can see like, oh, it's a pretty big tree that came out. What is that, dude? And now that, I see dude? it. That thing is like, uh, what? It's like four trees in one. I really actually did enjoy it when it was a par five in well, that gap. I, don't I know think that I they, they did too. And I, I, it's a great hole down there. But that tree. But the tree, the, the tree that's not there anymore, <laughs> like huh. that tree is no longer a problem according to Huey. But I'm telling you, I saw, I saw it a week and a half ago, and I mean it was gigantic. So just looking at this basket placement, it looks like it's definitely a different uh, distance, not just to the right. What makes this tournament even harder is that this course demands tough shot after shot, but also the mental battle each player has to go through. Just like it was last weekend, it's going to be more of a mental challenge than it is a physical challenge. It can be that mental challenge almost more so than the physical design of the, how, the, how tight the holes are. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough feat to get through here, especially for four rounds. We can all throw the right shot shapes, but for hitting the line specifically, I know a lot of players, it's all in their head. And that I've always struggled with that problem when I'm in the woods sometimes is it's mostly in my head 
but when I'm feeling good and I'm fully committed to my shots, it feels pretty easy. So kind of just uh, depends on how the game's feeling that week and how the mind's feeling. There isn't much complaints about the course itself, but oh man, every person and their comment throwing grandpa has an opinion on the format. Sure, you can read all these comments from random disc golf fans online, but we'll be going through those on Monday. So make sure to subscribe and comment below what you think about the championship format to be featured then. But for now, I'll listen to the people actually playing in the tournament. A four-round tournament as opposed to like kind of two two-rounders that we had last year. I think this is going to be a, a much better better test of, you know, who, who the true champion is. I think it's a, a fair advantage. You know, I, I think we get to our points for a reason. And I think... Uh, this is a pretty good way of rewarding that person, you know, giving them, you know, an advantage and sometimes a really big advantage over some people. But it's something that he earned throughout the uh, the entirety of the season. So I think it's it's perfectly fair. If you don't like it, try to place better next year. I will say, I think that not having a cut makes this a very uninteresting, mm. less interesting tournament. Right. Um, you got so many fun, cool shots because of the cut, because you've right. had players coming down the stretch that need a birdie here. That is interesting. And they, they have to play a different game plan than they normally do. Right. But now it's just a straight-up tournament. Right. Where they're starting. That is a good point. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people's thoughts are on this format switched up from last season. Right. I love the, like, start at do 32, or die. It's, get down to 16, right. get down to 8, get down to 4, what, however it you makes, it. It makes, it makes every day have that, like, high-pressure situation no matter what, yeah. whereas now it's going to be kind of... And, and it's gonna it gets be a little you, bit relaxed. I think we can all agree on one thing. Calling this the event the finale is so much cooler. So until that changes, I'm just going to sit in the minivan and whine. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on in the Tour Championship, subscribe to not miss out on our daily round recaps telling you how far Ganonbur is in the lead. With this being the last event of the year, we're trying to see how close we can get to 25,000 subscribers. So if you're like one of the 64% of the people watching without pressing that damn button, what in the hell have you been doing? Let me guess, putting with the judge or something.